difficult, 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 women. Hello. Hello. Oh my God, you guys, we're potting in the morning. It's too early. It's like, it's it's like noon. What? (laughs) Well, full disclosure, I tried, we tried to do real early, which that doesn't happen in the horror world, in our, in the horror house here. (laughs) <laughs> and I fucked it up. I mean, that's the truth is I fucked it up. I like, you know, not to be awake. honest, I was hoping that you would fuck it up because I was so tired and my voice like, I, you know, I did a testing of recording because sometimes I forget to plug my microphone into the computer, um, as you've heard in the last uh, <laughs> two episodes ago. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I I took a, I did a practice recording of my voice and it was like, hello. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, that's how I on. feel like my voice is today. So sorry, everybody. But what it is what it is <laughs> and it, we're here we're here um i'm marie i'm katie <laughs> i forgot and we're difficult women <laughs> i feel so fucking difficult you come at me right now Oof. world i feel real difficult and i don't feel bad about it at all me neither no, no apologies no you know it's not a problem. i the, the moon there's something oh oh i read this whole thing about so we're recording on labor day today this is monday you're hearing this tomorrow tuesday but Labor Day is supposed to be today. We're just supposed to like relax and like breathe into life. I've already like screamed a couple times. Yeah, and it's, screamed it's into my pillow. Um, <laughs> I will happy say, Labor Day. side note, uh, I've I have been following the stars a little bit. In case anybody cares, nobody cares. I can't. No, I I'm kind of into this right They're, now. Since like I'm, September's an interesting month because. Um, they had when October is going to be really interesting, but um, oh, shit. there was really? a big. I don't know if it was a full moon or a new moon or a blue, one of the moons. A moon happened. <laughs> a moon happened full a moon. couple <laughs> days ago, and it was like an intense moon. So, like, I think what you're talking about is not untrue. And I experienced it. I mean, my life has been nuts since that full moon or moon, whatever moon was happening. New moon, <laughs> some moon. But then the thing about October, this is this. I love this like second hand horse come knowledge because i do such a bad job but like because i don't really know but like but in october there's gonna be two moons happening what yep two moons <laughs> two moons in the sky no but like two like two full moons two blue moons two it's i think it's a blue moon though it's called once in a blue moon there's two moons but it's not two moons you can't say two moons because then that's gonna freak everybody out look i don't we don't like to fact check anything we just say what we say so if you don't like it get out of here katie says in october there's gonna be two moons rising and the earth is gonna implode no that feels i didn't right. say the earth implode i just said it's gonna be two moons that's my sprinkle of horoscope <laughs> advice oh god anyway it doesn't matter <laughs> nothing matters anymore uh um, nothing matters wait can it's i talk about though. my hair for like one second <laughs> oh my god i was hoping you'd bring it up <laughs> my hair you guys i know this sounds like it's gonna be boring but it's not gonna be boring it's political and my hair is political which is on oh is it is your hair voting for trump <laughs> <laughs> no never um <laughs> not never um although he does say we can vote twice so <laughs> We can, my hair can vote in it. Two moons, two votes. Two moons, two oh votes. my god! Totally. No, I'm just gonna talk real quick about my hair. Um, and it is political, and it's weird, and I don't know how to feel about it. But um, quick backstory: if you've seen a picture of me with curly hair, that's because I've curled it with a curling iron. That's how I did my hair. <laughs> no, wait, it gets better. It gets better. But so I. Sorry, uh, I'm just tired. That's fine. Cool. <laughs> I so I know my I've known myself as someone with straight hair, right? My hair's straight, and it's like pretty mm-hmm. straight. Anyway, mm-hmm. TikTok, the children of TikTok, taught me <laughs> that my hair is actually quite wavy. And I went through this like series of like, I went to Walgreens, I bought some products, I did a thing. It took it takes a while, but you put all this shit in your hair and you dry it a certain way and let it just like na- and honestly, you na- you can just let it naturally dry. And holy fuck, you guys. My hair is like real wavy. <laughs> like no idea. I knew it was like a little wavy. It's like a real wavy. Katie, I know your hair is wavy. I, I knew this. I didn't know. Because whenever. <laughs> what did you know? <laughs> I've known you for 10 years. It's like a little Occasionally wavy. Occasionally you got some wave in it. Yeah. but it Especially was like... when we, we go to the beach, you frolic in the <laughs> waves, you come out, yeah. you got some waves. The waves give me some waves. Here's the thing. Yeah. I had no beach. control over it. 
I didn't get it. I didn't understand. Oh. And so uh-huh. here's where it gets political. So you know me. I have to make everything very serious when it shouldn't be serious. But but there's this. It is. There's a lot of like backlash to this like thing that's happening across our country, which is that white girls are realizing their hair is wavy and curly. And some for some people it's curly. And I watched so many videos. I mean, so many YouTube videos about this. But at the end of the day, one of the things that's problematic about it is that it is um, another form of appropriation because the system there is a woman that started this thing called the curly girl method. And it's a white woman and she never attributes her method to anybody of color. But she basically just like is teaching white people how to do your hair the way that like people who have naturally curly hair have been doing it forever. And us white people are like, oh, my God, like, this is so crazy. Like, look at this new thing that we're doing. And it's like, no, no, we didn't do that. And so to be kind of like in the middle of this appropriation fad, I don't know what to call it, and be like, and I'm I am legitimately like, I don't know, I'm surprised that my hair is the way that it is. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. But this is a real thing. Look it up. <laughs> It's crazy though. It's crazy. I mean, you I believe see the I... products I have. I have like six products now that I do. There's a whole system. There's a difference between being like, oh, I, it looks wavy sometimes, and like, oh, I have like control over what my natural hair is. And maybe you don't know because like your hair is pretty straight or it does what it does, and like it looks great all the time. Your hair looks great like all the time, and my hair's like well, I'm frizzy balding and weird. right now because I'm all the stress. So, <laughs> but well, prior to the balding, you. <laughs> your hair was always great. But one thing that did come up during all this, and I love my mother, she's wonderful, but but <laughs> when I told her, yeah, but when I told her about this, I was so like, mom, did you know that my hair was this wavy? Her response was, oh yeah, my hair is like that too. And I was like, why didn't you, why don't we know how to style it? <laughs> like why, mm. why are we fighting against the natural tendencies of our hair then? Because I was grown up, I was raised in a place where it was like, make it straight, make it straight, like curl it with a, a curling iron, do this. And I really was faced with this weird, like, oh, my God, this is such a micro thing. And yet, like, it is a whitewashing of everything. <laughs> my mm. mom was like, don't let it get kinky, though. Like, oh, it's so ugly when it's like that. And I was like, that that statement oh, yeah. is racist. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, that is. Mm. And my hair is kind of it's kinky in a um, in a very <laughs> broad sense because it's not like that. But like, so I, I'm not claiming for it to be super curly so i know if anybody doesn't care about hair then you're like i don't know what you're talking about but my point just being that like i just experienced this like these these small things in life that we don't think about much and how white culture has whitewashed even white people <laughs> mm. and it and this does tie into kind of what we're talking about today so that's kind of one of the reasons why i brought it up fascinating is that boring? Really, I don't know. I think that like, no, no, it's not no, boring no. to me, but. No, I mean, uh, no, I didn't know that there was an actual, there's a cultural appropriation of it. I mean, I think everyone, every, every, you know, female I, a person identifying as female, if they ha- want their hair to be natural, they should just lean in. Totally. To that. But like, that's just not what we've been raised to do. No, we've been raised. White people have been raised to have straight hair, like as much as they possibly can. And and then I mean, why even, did I get the perm in fifth grade? Because and seventh because grade, we, like and ninth grade. And why do we curl our hair? Oh. Like you know, like it's like this weird, yeah. like backwards thing. It's like we will have curls in this way, and if mm-hmm. we, and and I, and I also bring it up as like a political thing because there was a woman, a black woman, who was like doing sort of like shit talking these white girls about this whole new system that we've discovered, which we haven't, I'm doing air quotes because I'm, that's the appropriation part. But, um, Mm -hmm. and she was sort of like, you don't have curly hair. Like you're, you know, you're just like trying to, you're styling it a certain way. And my sort of feeling was like, wow, like it's, I don't know. I don't, this is such a weird topic, but like, I feel when I found out how curl, like how wavy my hair is, I felt like I'd been lied to my entire life. But wait a minute. But you're putting six different products in your hair to find out that it's wavy? This is where I'm confused. Right. And I think that this is also the conversation then that this woman was having. It's like, well, you're doing all these things to it. I'm like, yeah, but 
every when you have curly hair, if you don't do things to it, it's really frizzy or it's doing weird things, right? So you put all those mm -hmm. products in to like control it basically to like get it to like be smooth and whatever what i'm realizing is my hair's been really dry it's like mm. not moist it, all the products i put in are mostly moisturizing products it's just to keep it really moisturized ah. and then one product i put in now it's to like keep the curl pattern like if you if you if you like squish it up like if you like brush it right like white girls brush their hair all the time because we've been told brush your hair brush your hair brush your hair if it's really curly and my hair's not really curly, but if it's wavy or curly and you're brushing it, you're disrupting mm -hmm. the curl pattern. This sounds so <laughs> dumb that I'm talking about this, but, but, but it's a real <laughs> thing. And that then you, you know what I mean? Like if you brushed very, very, very curly hair, it would just be like a puff, right? Mm -hmm. That's why people don't, like you have to, you have to put products in and stuff to like have it look uh, curly, <laughs> like right. for anybody. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't know. It's just I anyway, I had an awakening <laughs> this like week. Um, but again, an, an awakening about my hair, which was moving to me personally, but then an awakening about how does um, appropriation happen? And I'm like, oh, I'm it's happening now. Like I, I can sort of see the steps of appropriation in this particular case and not and part of it is just not giving credit where credit is due. So this Curly mm -hmm. Girl Method book where she doesn't say, I learned this from black people <laughs> and I'm trying mm. to teach white people. She doesn't say that. She's like, I developed mm. this method. It's like, oh. no, you didn't. No, right. you didn't. And all of us mm. white girls are like, we are discovering how to do natural hair. No, we didn't. We didn't. Mm. It's been happening forever and we just have been ignoring it. Mm. Our mothers who meant well try white are whitewashing everything because their mothers did it not because our mothers are bad. oh i'm still so mad at my mom for all the hairdos the bowl cut oh yeah what was that <laughs> anyway. <So> white people <laughs> white people it's anyway very, well so i did the bowl cut and then i had to wear dangly earrings to make sure people knew i was a girl because that was such a thing did now they, i don't they get thought you were a, a boy but i don't think yeah if i didn't would mistake you for a boy now it is well, the bet my my favorite story about my younger sister is she got her haircut just like mine in like fifth grade, and then we're playing outside, and our neighbor, who we've known forever since our you know, <laughs> comes up and goes, "Who are you, little boy?" To my sister. Oh God! Not that it's bad to be whatever, flu, no, whatever. No, but I'm point. just it's saying, just you, as a child, who it was you know, scarring. <laughs> it was pretty scarring for her. So sometimes, occasionally, when. The family is together. I'll go, who are you, little boy? <laughs> she does not like that. Anyway, anyway, yeah, I love a good awakening. Uh, speaking of awakenings, that's what this episode is about. Yes, there is a huge awakening going on and we all need to fucking wake up. Yeah. <laughs> so today we're talking about Breonna Taylor. It is a story that when it first came out and still boggles our minds that the police who killed her in her own home have not been arrested and there's a lot going on behind it and there's a new documentary on Hulu and FX or whatever that you can watch that kind of breaks everything down in the moment right now but I think that there's still a lot more developing but we just wanted to talk through it, um, it to educate you all if there's things that you don't possibly know about it, maybe we can share that information. But also just kind of wrap our brains around this thing because I think that there's more to what's happening with Breonna Taylor that's just there's a problem in the system and here is a here's here it is. Here's an example. Yeah. And I think also like what occurred to me as we were like, oh, this will we talk about this today or whatever. One of the reasons I think why it's important that we're talking about it is this the term um, justice for Brianna or, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, specifically that term, it's almost becoming white noise. Mm -hmm. It's like people, it doesn't mean anything anymore to people because all this time has passed. You just kind of like shout it out in solidarity or something. But what does it mean? You know, it's like yes. forgetting what, what this mean? means. And I think that like the timing of the documentary is great because it, we need to re be reminded. We need to like come back and say, mm -hmm. okay, wait, what, what really, what happened here? What was the deal? Why are we upset? Why are people quote unquote looting and quote unquote rioting? Right. This is why. And it's not, and the other thing is it's not about Breonna Taylor only. Mm -hmm. It's about this problem 
that is mm-hmm. much more far reaching. And that was another thing. Like, I, I, first of all, I, I Marie, what Marie said, go watch this documentary on um, Hulu. It's very important that everybody sees mm-hmm. it <laughs> to understand what's going on here. But also one thing that struck me is that let's say we get full justice, quote unquote, for Breonna Taylor, which would be what, like every cop that was involved in that was arrested, let's say. Let's say the best case scenario. Right. You know, well, prosecuted. And prosecuted, arrested, locked away for life. Let's say locked that that, and life. again, I'm saying that and I know some people are like, what? No, that's not okay. And we're going to get into that. But I'm just saying like, let's say mm-hmm. that's what people want. Let's say we get it. Then what? Mm-hmm. You know, I think one thing it's, that's really hit me is that it's this isn't just about, oh, OK, great. She got justice. First of all, it took it would have taken months. Mm-hmm. But also now it's what are the next steps and what, what does that mean? You know, anyway. Mm-hmm. So well, I'm really glad that you said that because we do need a reminder why we are talking about it right now. I do. And I feel like maybe I've. You know, I've I've been posting about it on social media. You know, Oprah gave her the cover of her magazine. You know, I and I thought that that was really powerful to the first time Oprah has not been on her magazine. She put the image of Breonna Taylor. But then, of course, there was black backlash because of that. And people were saying that they were sensationalizing her murder. Um, I've been seeing like jokes done about, you know, memes and things and. I just want to like get all that like that's not what we're that's not why we're here that's not why we're talking about it I, it's it, we're not trying to sen- sensationalize it we're not trying to like sell an episode or whatever this stuff is so important to talk about and to not forget and I'm glad that you said that because that's why we're talking about right. it well so again if you've been living under a rock what the sort of welcome to story. earth yeah oh it's, god it's, it's on fire it's um, rough. um it's yeah. rough down here but so what happened was that uh brianna taylor was shot by police on march 12th 13th like in midnight around mm-hmm. eric time um she was a essential worker she was a nurse so she was fighting the pandemic at the time um, or she was an EMT going to right. I'm sorry, school, that's right? correct. She yeah. was an EMT, like going to nursing school, wanted to be a nurse, but she was working. You know, she was a frontline yeah, essential a, worker, so she yeah, was doing exactly. great things. Watch the again, watch the documentary. Lovely woman, whatever. Not that that even matters, to be honest. That shouldn't be the reason why we're upset. But anyway, um, she there was a no knock warrant that was uh, issued for her house which it's very unclear why, uh, 100% why that particular house was targeted because it wasn't even in the same neighborhood as the other no-knock warrants that were also issued for that day. Um, the police came in. According to lots of people, they never announced they were police, or if they did, it was not loud and not clear. And then mm-hmm. uh, they came in to the house. Her boyfriend, understandably, was startled. She was startled, too. And because um, someone's breaking into their house, the door doors kind of like just sort of bash bash down. Her her boyfriend had a gun legally because it's mm-hmm. it's Louisville, Kentucky. They're allowed to have guns, and shot one shot to sort of be like, "Who is this?" He kept saying, "Who is it? Who is it?" Nobody nobody responded. Once he shot the one shot, the police like opened fire. I think she was shot five times. It's mm-hmm. sort of like a miracle that her boyfriend wasn't shot. Right. That's just random. And, you know, and luckily he wasn't because now we have the firsthand account mm-hmm. and we would never be talking about this if he had died. Oh, they just oh, would have swept it. They never right. took her body to the hospital and for hours. They just left her in the room because it was a crime scene. I guess they had to like or not, I mean, crime scene. It was a it was a crime scene because the police murdered her. But um, they supposedly went in there looking for guns and money or drugs and money. And then once she was killed, they never even looked for the drugs. <laughs> right. That that in the documentary blew my mind. Yeah. But they did. They they didn't look. But then in the documentary, they did say that they didn't find there's there was none of that. In I mean, eventually somebody probably was eventually like, why are, somebody. I mean, they they case the whole house because they ha- were doing it's a crime the, scene. Yeah. They also. So have they. To, yeah. And they n- nobody so ever eventually. said, oh, by the way, here's a bag of cocaine. You know what I mean? It wasn't that right. never ha- came up. So anyway, that's sort of the backstory. Um, they arrested her, her boyfriend, mm-hmm. uh, for nothing really, because he legally had a gun and was 
being intruded upon, but they have to cover their asses. So they arrested him. And now there's like more and more evidence coming out. So I get, I guess I just want to back up real quick and just like remind people like, again, why we're doing this episode, which is that it's so when these things happen, I hear so many people go, um, white people mostly go, um, well, she must have done something wrong. Or mm -hmm. if she, if that, if they find out that that's not, the, so the first thing is she must have done something wrong. Well, it turns out she didn't. Okay, well, I mean, it was a mistake. And, you know, there's one one bad apple, one bad apple in mm -hmm. the department, whatever. Th this is this isn't a one off. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is happening a lot. You know what I mean? This is happening a and lot. Also, right. even if it's just one time, look at other countries. This doesn't happen in other countries. Mm -hmm. This doesn't happen in Sweden, <laughs> in our favorite right. country. Um, <laughs> it just doesn't. Well, what I want to add is that her younger sister is 20 years old, spends the night at Brianna's apartment two nights, three nights out of the week, along with her two-year-old niece. They were not there that night. But had they had been there, they'd be dead. what would have happened? They'd be dead. They'd be dead. And as it turns out, there was one cop in particular. Actually, I'm going to say their name. I want, this is, they, they're not anonymous humans. They're uh, Brett Hankinson, Jonathan Mattingly, and Miles Cosgrove were the people that shot that night, that they fired their guns. And um, Brett Hankinson specifically, not only he was shooting from outside of the house, couldn't look in, was just shooting randomly. They think he probably was the one that shot the, you know, fired the shot that killed her because it was just like whatever. But they don't know. They're not 100 percent sure. Yeah, they don't have they don't know who specifically shot her. Right. He went her. AWOL after the shooting. Like, so the thing wasn't disappeared even done. for two hours, just left the right? crime scene, yeah, just which left. is uh -huh, mm -hmm. I'm sh I guarantee you is not, not procedural. procedural. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then also, as it turns out, had all these complaints against him. He had been harassing women. He had been assaulting women. He'd had a, a horrible past. So, again, bad apple. OK, fine. Why was he still in the department? Mm -hmm. Why aren't we firing these cops? Why aren't like this? I. <sighs> Why was he there? <laughs> right. Well, Brett Hanginson, in the documentary, they do have a woman who encountered him months before, and he was in his police uniform. She was at a bar. She was walking home. He pulled over and offered her a ride home, which, ladies, you know, I listen to all the true crime podcasts. <laughs> like, don't don't get ever her. fucking get in a car, even with, I mean, a guy... Anybody can throw on a police uniform. Right. It is a fel felony. Yes. Uh, if you uh, impersonate a police officer. But don't. If don't, you get murdered by that guy. You, it, what, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, don't. Just don't. But anyway, that's. I'm not putting it on her at all. No. You should be able to do whatever the fuck you want and not have a man, you know, accost you. But he drove her home, touched her leg, and then kissed her on the head. Gross. Get the fuck out of here. But. She then learned that there were so many other complaints just like that right. about him. Or worse. I think there was some horrible yeah, assault I think cases, that, like right. almost like rape things. Um, right. The other thing about that, <sighs> though, that is so interesting is like, again, this is like a reckoning for white people, right? So like she was a white woman in that story. And mm -hmm. we are raised to believe that cops are good. <laughs> the right. white, white people that are. That is such a good point. Right. That's why she got in the car. She wouldn't have gotten right. in the car if she was black. She'd have been like, this man's going to kill me. <laughs> like, that's not, right. you know what I mean? Or maybe she would have. But the point is that, like, we really... The system is built for a certain color of person. And the color that's is white, it... by the way. Like, yes. Let's, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um. So That's such a... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I... I, I th this case is so egregious. It's so clearly egregious. And again, you can watch the documentary, but the house even that they... Tar her house they targeted wasn't even in the neighborhood that they were really targeting so even that what I want to say is it this case is so egregious and it's been since March we don't have a lot of information from the police department all the information we have is from like attorneys and like outside um, detectives and things like that like the police are not giving up a lot of information they said there's no body cam footage but we just found out like a day ago that um one of the cops was wearing a body cam. What if it was right. turned on or not? We don't know. But like he was wearing it. 
So why wouldn't right. it be on? And they said that nobody had one. Right. They're, right. They've been kind of lying. They, when they filled out the incident report, it said <gasps> no one was harmed. No one was harmed. That they right. did not burst into the house. And we know for a fact that both of those things are lies. Mm-hmm. So why why would we why would we believe cops? Why would we support that? Why like t- tell me like what where where we're at right now? And again, as a white person, you're like, well, but I mean, they're just doing their job. It's like, is their job is to murder people <laughs> in their own homes? in their own homes when they haven't done anything wrong? Right. We have a well, we the, have a problem. <laughs> we have a right. problem. Well, also sprinkle in the media that did not help initially. Right when it first started happening, they were spreading you know, news headlines that Breonna Taylor was part of a drug ring, right. that she was a drug dealer, she was hiding drugs for her ex-boyfriend, um, and that also that her boy, her boyfriend, Kenny, um, was a cop killer. Right. So, like, you were seeing these types of headlines. So the media is part of the full problem as well. And and the media sucks. And we're not saying, like, <laughs> you know, we're not like, oh, fuck, fake news, fake news, fake news all the time. But we've we me and Marie just privately had a conversation about this recently where it's like you the media is there to sell papers. And you know what I mean? Right. And they sensationalize. And that's just and it's our our media has gotten moved more and more and more towards again. I think the theme, we should change the name of this podcast to money is the root of all evil <laughs> because <laughs> the, at the end of the day, it comes back to money. They want to sell papers. So it's not fair and balanced news anywhere. Like, you know, there's always mm. going to be a bias. And one thing that struck me as I was watching the documentary, there's a image of like a mugshot of her boyfriend. And mm. I'm going to say something that's terrible, but it's true. So I'm going to say it. As a white person, I looked at that picture and it sort of flashed on the screen quickly. And I thought like, oh, yeah, I've seen this picture a million times. And I don't mean this particular man. I mean that like we have we they, see these we see mm. mug shots of black people, black men specifically, especially. And my first sort of like knee jerk reaction is that like, oh, yeah, it's him. He did it. Oh, right. Black man. He's dangerous. Like it is so embedded in us to like it's it it's I don't think that people fully understand how powerful it is to just like flash a picture of a black man in a mugshot and say, mm. see, it's his fault. And that criminal. white people yep, he's criminal. a criminal. He's a criminal. Criminal. And white people go, criminal. Oh, okay. Yep, he's a criminal. Mm-hmm. And it's so it's like we are all brainwashed. Mm-hmm. And then when you and then like now that we're finding out the real story here, then you go, what oh fuck like oh fuck like so then again this story is so egregious that like he's been able to be freed luckily think about all the people that have not been think Mm -hmm. of all the stories we're not talking about because we don't know about that are maybe not exactly like this but the idea is that like that that are have been unfairly handled there's so many this is just the one we know Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm like doubling down on the body cam issue. They, every police officer, if you're going to serve, serve and protect us, you should be held accountable for all of your actions. And the easiest, simplest way to do it is always having a body cam on. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And I mean, I hate to say that because then who knows, like it, it's it has to do with the police officer and if they're a good, a good one or a bad one, whatever the fuck that is. But We're learning now that, I mean, just this year, because we have the footage, we're able to prosecute these things. Like even what just happened in uh, New York, in Rochester, that happened months ago. But because the body cam footage just came out, the we're able to have uprise and 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 make a difference, you know. But I think without the camera footage. This stuff is happening everywhere and has been happening everywhere. And it's only now that they can be held accountable because we have the footage and the lawyers are fucking working overtime. And if you have it's nothing, the lo- yeah. and it protects the police, honestly, too, and it, because yeah. like, let's say so. Um, and uh, and also I want to say if you don't have anything to hide, what's the problem? Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. Right. Exactly. But al- it's the smallest little thing. But also with the in terms of the protecting the police to wear the body cam, there was another story that popped up. I I don't know why, but I get alerts for like Fox News too. <laughs> so like, 
Oh, Katie, no. Are, it's not on purpose. It just kind of came through. But I like to see what they talk about on there. Like, it's v- fascinating to see what makes headlines on Fox News versus other media yeah. things. Anyway, there was some thing that popped up. Uh, you may or may not have heard about this story. But the police shot a white woman this week or something. Or they shot a white woman and the story was coming out. So I was like, interesting. What is the story here? And I think that the idea was they were like, you know, police shoot white people too. So why are people so upset? <laughs> you know what I mean? I think people want to, mm-hmm. like, people should, the police shouldn't be shooting anybody. So, like, I mean, unless they have to, I mean, that's the whole thing. I'm not saying they shouldn't shoot anybody, but like, they shouldn't be shooting innocent people, right? So I'm like, what's I the think deal? police should have Nerf guns, and that's it. Nerf guns would be a great <laughs> oh, idea. Not, yeah. Like a, or slingshot. That's my idea. Okay. Yeah. Everybody gets a slingshot. Um, <laughs> but, the the thing is, I was like, okay, so what did like what happened with this white woman? Was it like a Breonna Taylor situation where they just burst in and murdered this woman? No, the woman had a knife, and in the body cam footage, you can watch her coming lunging at the police officer, being like, "I'm gonna kill you." She's screaming, "I'm gonna kill you!" She stabbed the police officer in the arm, and then they shot her, and they killed her. I mean, yeah, don't do that. Don't <laughs> like th- this is the shit where I'm like, they. You can't compare apples and oranges. Right. This white person with a knife who's screaming, I'm going to kill you, and then stabs you. They waited till she was stabbed. The officer was stabbed to shoot her. You know what I mean? That, that's bananas. somebody. Yeah. But my point is just that, like, shut up if you're saying things like, well, white people get killed by police, too. It's like, yeah, people get p- killed by police when they're running at the police with a knife and shouting, right. I'm going to kill you. Right. That's not what well, uh, that's not what uh, all the people that we're protesting about. That's not what any of those people did. No, that's not what this is about. This is. Yeah. But back to Breonna Taylor, there's new information coming out of, of pictures of the crime scene at night and then the next day and things have been moved. Right. And again, back to my true crime podcasts. Uh, first rule of thumb, don't touch the fucking evidence. Right. And so it's clearly that that. I guess some of the bullet shell casings mm-hmm. have been moved mm-hmm. and and items in the apartment had been moved too. Yeah. So, well, they, I mean. From the get-go, they were trying to pin it on her boyfriend. That, that was their official story from the beginning. They're like, right. he shot at us, so we had to protect ourselves. Well, And he shot the guy in the, in the leg too. Yeah. Well, Which, but now. That's a whole. No, but so now mm-hmm. they're saying. That, so one officer was shot, and that's the reason why they're saying, well, that's why we shot up the whole house, which doesn't make any sense anyway. But secondly, mm-hmm. that d- guy that was the officer that was shot, there's now evidence saying that it was another police officer that shot him. What? Yes. During the whole what? melee. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's Where more did you learn that? Just from this new evidence um, in terms of where they were wow. finding bullet holes and things. Like, it doesn't right. make sense. Cause, and according to... It's- you know, witnesses or what? I mean, according to her boyfriend, he was like, "I shot one shot. He shot right. once." And mm-hmm. so, like, and and, and I think he didn't even sh- he didn't too. shoot to kill. I think he shot to be like, "Get out of my house. Get out of my yeah. house." Right. So it's possible right. he even shot in the air. You know what I mean? We don't know, but like, right? Or maybe they do know, but like, um, yeah, like so, th- so that this this thing of like covering things up. And again, I just want to really emphasize that like this isn't like just one story this shit happens every fucking day where police make a mistake and then they cover it up Mm -hmm. and that's the part we don't know we don't even know what we don't know Mm -hmm. well this is the thing about the ballistics report that just came out and they're not actually giving that information quite yet but i had to google like what's a ballistics report (laughs) but it's it's they can prove so if a police officer has a gun and shoots a ton of bullets, they can go in and identify which bullets came from which gun. So, I mean, that- and so they're they're figuring that out now. They said that they have the full report, but they're not releasing it to the public quite yet. But that's going to be so telling. So then they can prove that Kenny shot. Maybe he shot up in the air and then the police, whatever. Well, but no police officer should ever be shooting without an eye on the target. Right. 
And there was the, again, there was that guy Brett. Yeah, there were people outside. Brett yeah. um, Hankinson, Hankinson who walked Hankinson, away yeah. from the scene. He was shooting. He shot a lot of rounds from outside and not being able to see. So clearly, okay, can we? I want to talk for one second about the police from the police perspective. So uh, a couple weeks ago, I had an opportunity to talk to a, a friend, fan of ours, who is a police officer. And because I was just like, what is happening? <laughs> like, can mm-hmm. what are, what is what I need to hear a little bit more about from your perspective, what is happening here? And we did talk about Breonna Taylor a little bit. We talked about no knock warrants and like one thing I just kind of want to make people aware of is that every rule that has been put in place by the police departments is there for a reason, right? So like at some point in time in the past, something happened where probably a police officer was killed in a, you know, by a criminal and they said, you know, if we hadn't knocked, if we hadn't, if we had been able to just like burst in, we could have gotten those guys and our officer wouldn't have died. So then somebody said, you know what, we're going to make a thing now. There's going to be a law passed where you can go in and not knock. Right. So there are legitimate times where those no knock warrants have been useful to the police. Right. In a way that maybe they did exactly what they were supposed to do. And they went in there and they achieved their goal. And no police were hurt maybe nobody was killed right the problem is (laughs) these the things like brown and taylor right this idea now that like these rules get so warped right they get pushed to such limits that they're like handing out these warrants kind of willy-nilly that's not a warrant that should be allowed very often at all it should be a very Mm -hmm. very specific specifically dangerous case and where they have an insane amount of proof that they have to go in without knocking or with, and they mm-hmm. did knock in this case, but without, you know, without, and they're always supposed to identify themselves. So that was also illegal, but like, um, but that you can, even this idea that you're allowed to burst into the apartment, mm-hmm. you have to be in theory, you have to be able to prove to a judge who signs the warrant that you have, that this has to be the, this is the only way we can catch these people is if we do it this way and we are willing to put everybody at risk. And then the judge has to go like, Okay, I see your point, and I will say yes or no to this thing. So one mm-hmm. of the things that our our police friend was saying, he was like, you know, people are really, really mad at the police officers in this case. Understandably, I mean, we understand why. But another person we have to start looking at, or another people we have to start looking at, are like the judges that sign off on the warrants. Mm. The police wouldn't have been there at all if the judge hadn't signed the warrant and said, and and they they put some evidence together, and the judge. She said she's looked at it for 30 minutes, which I guess sounds Mm -hmm. like, is that a long amount of time? Is that a short amount of time for someone's life? It doesn't sound like long to me. But so she looked at it and said, yeah, okay, no problem. Go in there and just. But that was in a pile of all the other warrants. So she took 30 minutes to go through the whole pile. Oh, it was three minutes for the pile. That's what I understood. So she didn't. So she was just, you know. She just was signing warrants without even taking a look at like, these things change people's lives, (laughs) you know? They kill people, yes. Yeah, and they ch- and they and they kill people, and they affect her mother, her her friends, her boyfriend. Like it just changes everybody's lives, for what you know. So I think that that was a that was one point that I thought was well taken. That like we should also be mad mm-hmm. <laughs> at mm-hmm. the people that are signing off on these warrants. That that judge, I never hear about her. Right, I don't hear about her. Right, why isn't she going to jail? Mm-hmm. Did she sleep at night? I mean, what you know, like th- that's. And I think that, again, I think our friend was sort of trying to talk about how, like, the police are getting, like, um, villainized, again, for a good reason sometimes, for sure. Mm -hmm. So I thought that that was worthy of mentioning, just that, like, that the blame has to be spread out amongst everybody involved, not just Mm -hmm. the men that executed the execution, Mm -hmm. right? So there's that. Um, the other thing, though, is this bad apple thing. I just want to talk about the bad apple concept. So that's another. Mm-hmm. He really was like, you know, not all police officers are, ba- are bad or doing these bad things. OK. I, I mean, I believe that. I believe that there's some really amazing police officers. And, um, and, and, I, and I actually would say I bet you the majority of police work is done well. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I... In every job I've had, it feels like, and I'm thinking even a couple specific restaurant jobs, I've been on teams where every single person on that team is great. 
and we like work really well together. And then there'll always be like that guy that sucks Mm -hmm. and he like (laughs) can't, he doesn't care. He's like a little bit of a psychopath. He like doesn't take the orders properly. He doesn't, he just decides he's not going to put the orders in the way that we do it. You know what I mean? He's like, just doesn't give a fuck. And that one person can ruin an entire night of work. That one person. You know what we do usually, and and we don't even do it enough in the restaurant industry, but usually what you do is you fire that guy. Mm. The first night that shit goes ape ape shit, you fire that guy if if you have a good manager, right? Now, the restaurants where that guy doesn't get fired, because that happens a lot too, right, where the guy just stays and stays and stays, it's because the manager sucks. It's because the manager doesn't give a fuck. So when I'm looking at these situations where he, people keep saying like, well, it's just a couple, it's like a few bad apples. Why are they there? Why, as a, as a project manager, which is what the head of police is in every department, why are you allowing these people to stay? After the, after the, a couple, a handful of like women saying, hey, this guy, Brett, uh, Brett Hacken, Hankinson was like, kissing me on the forehead and touching my thigh i'd be like get the fuck out of here you make us look bad Mm -hmm. you're ruining Mm -hmm. this stuff and the fact that like it took how long did it take to get brett hackinson fired he did finally get fired from the department it took months 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 and it was only because the the civil unrest and all the protests and and things otherwise he He wouldn't wouldn't, right no so so uh, to the police officers that are listening if there are any our issue isn't like with the good cops it's with the the people that are protecting the bad cops. And to mm. be honest with you, if you're a good cop and you're listening to this, it's your job as a quote unquote good cop to get those guys fired. It is you if you if you are supporting, if you are a quote unquote good cop and you continue to just say like cops are good, cops are good, cops are good, but you're not getting those guys fired, get the fuck out of here. You know? Like well, I do want to add to that. So, you know, I talk about the daily podcast on the New York Times. And last week they had an episode called Who Replaces Me? And they interviewed a police officer from Flint, Michigan named Scott Watson. And his he's a good cop. He he His story was unbelievable. I highly recommend listening to this podcast episode. Um, he's one of the good ones. He grew up in Flint, Michigan. He went off to college in Colorado And he came back to Flint, Michigan to be a police officer because he wanted to be a police officer. First time, you know, going out after training, he knew he knows the community. So all the other cops were shocked that he knew everybody that they were encountering. And he he saw with his own eyes all the injustices that some of these police officers were doing. And he would have to intervene. And he has this one specific story that he talks about. That he intervened so much that he took the guy in because they were beating him up right. for no reason. Right. And guess what's happening to this officer? He's going to get fired. Or worse. He's retiring. Yeah. He can't do... He he has tried so hard to be the good cop. Right. To hold the bad cops accountable. And it's the police... There's so much more to it. There's the police chiefs. There's the fucking... Unions. Unions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, inst- I mean, he's just so tired and he feels so helpless that he's retiring at 40. And he and he's the one that's actually officer. trying to do something, right? So, right. like, my sort of thing is, if you're a good cop, right, and you consider yourself a good cop, and I believe that you are, I believe that mm-hmm. you are, you need to gather all your good cop friends, because if, mm-hmm. you, if you are sure that there's a lot of them, and you guys have to, like, band together against the bad cops. Right. So you should be the most vocal in the black lives matter matter uh movement because mm-hmm. you've seen shit and if you haven't seen and you shit, know it's broken yeah you, and you know it's broken is, and right. and if you don't know it's broken then like i don't know then you're looking in the wrong direction mm-hmm. and maybe your particular town just is like it has a really great department and that is great that is great. Mm-hmm. Like, let's say you live in a town where your department really has an amazing record. You know the community. You're very, like, doing all of these good things. That's great. Then get your entire department to gather together to get rid of the bad departments. 
You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. that's how you make a difference. That's how we change the system. And if you're if you're a cop and you're afraid of us saying, like, defund the police, defund the police, then you know how we don't have to defund them if we fix it. (laughs) Mm-hmm. You know, like if we get it to a place where people does that mean that there are no bad people, that there's no crime? Of course not. There, that's the thing. It's like I we need police officers. We need them. Mm-hmm. We need them. They're important. Right. We don't we need know bad it. officers. We don't need bad officers. We don't need right. bad employees in any job. Well, you know, the conversation we brought up last week that I brought up about am I running with the man on the bridge? Clearly with a mental illness. Had I called the police. What we just saw with Daniel Prude. He did. They called the police because he had a mental illness. Right. His and brother they called. control him. His brother. His own family called. He didn't call because it's a killed. mental. Yeah. Right. So that's what we mean when we say defund the police. When there you have a. We should not always be calling 911. Or that's not. Let me rephrase that. We shouldn't only have the option to call 911 to then have this militarized right. police officers who are not to, trained in this right you know or maybe to they're show sort of up. trained yeah right to show up and then kill somebody you know i think that like and again i i want to emphasize like i'm 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 pro police in the sense that i want to make everybody's job easier mm-hmm I want to make everybody safer. I want everybody to be safer. I want the police to be safer. I want the communities, the people in the communities to be safer. I want everyone to, I want to feel safe. I want to feel safe in my neighborhood. I don't feel safe right now in my neighborhood. One of the reasons why I don't feel safe in my neighborhood right now is because the police in New York City have decided to like not work that hard. I'm not, I don't want to say it. That's not fair. That's not fair. But they, there is some word that they're like kind of being like, oh, you want to defund the police? Well, we'll show you what it's like when there's no police. And there's that some some not every officer and not every department, but there are some attitudes that are happening like that where people aren't like doing things. Also, the police are like overworked. They're getting called for people like on the bridge that are mentally ill. They don't they shouldn't go to that call. They should be taking care of the guy that's shooting his sister. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So the defund the police is actually to help the police, too. It's to give you more support. For the things that you don't need to worry about, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Like, I, 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 I'm, I'm pro-police. I really am. I really am. But I'm also Mm -hmm. anti-police because what the fuck is happening? Right. I'm anti this system that's not working for everybody. Well, clearly for with the Breonna Taylor situation, to even go back to the no-knock warrant, um, when they did get the warrant to enter her house they were doing they had other warrants that same night they were slapping together teams of people yeah. that hadn't even worked together so what is why that why is it yeah again why project is, management project management project management that's all, I got, that's we, what we're talking you about google yeah. it yeah. i mean i swear to god yeah but there's clearly it's even every every part of what happened with it should not have happened period she should be alive today. There were so, so many people fucked up along the system. Right. But again, I just want to clarify, because then that's the also the excuse that people use to say, well, it was just a really bad luck. No. And yes, the thing is, no. I just want to clarify that this happens all the time. Does it happen it every time? time yeah. No. Sometimes these things go off without a hitch and they're done mm-hmm. well. And sometimes mm-hmm. they're not. And like mm-hmm. the thing is, it matters because we're playing with ri- people's lives Mm -hmm. you know and they said that uh, i guess they were talking about like this in terms with covid but like we can use it for like for no reason people getting like killed by police that like if if the amount of people that have been murdered by police unwarranted was was like a plane crashing every day that people would be we would shut down airlines (laughs) right you know it would be that that (laughs) airline would cease to exist so Mm -hmm. the fact that this is happening and Again, like I think uh, when people are talking about riots and looting and they're like, well, we have to stop the riots. I'm like, I know a way to stop them. P- hold the police officers accountable when they do bad shit. Mm-hmm. That's it. And don't t- right. don't let it take seven million months. 
-hmm. get in there and fix it. That was another thing, by the way, that um, our friend had mentioned about. He mentioned, I said something about the Jacob Blake case. I'm like, what's going on here? Like, why, why is this, why did this happen? What's, you know, what is your sort of take on this? And he did say one of the the biggest mistakes that um, the Kenosha police made was that they didn't put out a statement immediately. Right. Mm. And he was like, that was a huge mistake because like then the the media goes and runs with the story. And like we saw with the Breonna Taylor case, the media just kind of like says what they want, you know. So then a lot of the information was not imparted properly. But then my question is, why did they wait? Mm. What are they hiding? You know, mm-hmm. and I think that that's just another like layer of like this. If there was transparency in a real way. You know, and if you're saying like as a pro as a police supporter, you're saying like, well, you know, we everyone's just doing the best they can. Everybody means well. Okay, if that's really true, then what's wrong with transparency? Mm -hmm. But what's wrong with the body cams? Why isn't why isn't every single police? I would if I was a police officer, I'd want to wear a body cam. I'd be like, I don't want to get because well, that's the narcotics team in Louisville. They were. They came and said that everyone has to wear a body cam. And the narcotics team was like, no, yeah. we're not going to do that. Yeah. They said no to it. Because what are they hiding? They're hiding shit. Because they know that they're, and especially the narcotics team, that they're planning shit, that they're, you know what I mean? That, that right. We know that that happens in these teams sometimes. I'm not saying every team, but I'm saying it happens. The other thing about all this, by the way, is that this no, these no-knock warrants that happened across the town or whatever, it was for drugs. Mm-hmm. We have a problem with this, like, mm-hmm. war on drugs thing, too. Mm-hmm. D- should anybody, you know, I mean, like, and I get that drug dealing and drug, there's a lot of crime that circles around drug dealing and drugs. So there, it's violent and it's dangerous. So, like, I get that totally. But, like, also, first of all, she didn't have drugs <laughs> in her house, mm-hmm. Brianna Taylor. And, like, this sort of, like, criminalizing of drug stuff especially marijuana which is not a violent drug um and i don't know what kind of drugs that these people were looking for and it it legitimately could have been a very intense like drug ring thing i get that but it's just sort of strange that like does drug dealing equal a cop killing somebody do you mean is that like fair and just right especially if it's marijuana especially if it's like not that much you know and these people that get put away for life for having a little bit of weed on their person Versus like people that are selling. I mean, there's just like all these. That's just another part of the conversation we need to have. And again, I think as our friend might say at this point, he'd say that's not up to the that's not up to the cops though. That's up to the criminal. That's like the justice system. So we have to make sure that we're holding the justice system accountable mm-hmm. too. And it's not just us screaming "cops suck," which is you know I get it, but also like the system. <laughs> that's the sucks. Name of this. Yeah, yeah. Episode. But it, the system sucks. You know what I mean. And right. the cops, especially the individual cops, are just working in the system. Mm-hmm. Those guys that showed right. up at Breonna Taylor's house that night, I don't think they necessarily were trying to kill people that night. I don't think that was their mission. You know, mm-hmm. I think they were like, oh, I'm showed up for work today. <laughs> I'm right. going to go to work. Right. They told me to do this oh, thing. They're firing at us oh. and I'll fire okay. back. Or now we're shooting our guns. Okay, that's what we're doing. You know, so it's like these individual people. I get why people are like, why cops are freaked out because they're like, we're just doing our job. And I'm like, I get it. Your mm-hmm. job is fucked. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's and and there's things that you don't even have control over that we have to make sure get changed. So, I don't well, know. the FBI Civil Division did they have proven that uh, her Breonna Taylor civil rights were um, they did prove it. Yes, violated. they have that, that they were violated. Yeah. Yes, I mean that's, so that's yeah that's good. That's big, and they did come up with the Breonna's law of that now they're banning no knock warrants in Louisville. Good. So, I mean, there's, but that's like tiny, a tiny grain of rice. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I mean, there's so much more to say about all this. It's so disheartening. And um, in some ways, I'm glad we're doing this episode now and we didn't do it in March Mm -hmm. or earlier. Because again, Mm -hmm. we have to just keep talking about this. And we have to keep emailing and calling the mayor the uh, attorney general of Kentucky. Those people. And our, whatever town you live in. You right. need to be calling those people and being like, I don't want this in my town. Mm-hmm. And if you're a police officer, you should be calling those people, too. You should be like, I don't want my department to be corrupted. I love my mm-hmm. job. I love being a police officer. I take care of my community. I don't want this nonsense happening in it. I don't want it. Mm-hmm. I want to I want to see more. I really want to see more cops standing up against 
bad cops. I want that's what I want to see mm-hmm. more than anything. I don't know. I feel very as we all sh- should and do a lot of us just heartbroken for her. She seemed very cool. She seemed like a very she had lots of plans for 2020 that seemed really yeah. I know. <laughs> it's not it's not fair. I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. It's just, it just makes me so sad. And that, and that, like, it should just be so obvious. Like, if they made a mistake, then it should have been taken care of. That's it. That's all people are really asking mm-hmm. for. I get it. People make mistakes. It's a hard, that is not an okay mistake to make. But the fact that a mistake was made that shouldn't have been made, and then now nothing. The fact that her mother showed up at the crime scene asking for her daughter, and they just left her body there for hours. I mean, it's insane. Didn't even tell her mother. It's insane. I mean, it is. Yeah, that is. It is. That is. That is the devil. That is. is, It's something that is not. It's criminal at minimum. At minimum, it's criminal. Right. And so, like, why isn't it being prosecuted that as criminal? They wanted right. to, they tried to, they tried to charge her boyfriend with, with criminal activity that he did not do. He, that, well, that's a whole other thing. They tried to get him to sign a plea deal saying, like, well, if you admit, just admit the, that Brianna yeah. was a drug dealer and then we'll let you free or we'll give you, like, a lighter sentence. And he was like, fuck that. She's not. Right. Right. But that's again, that shit happens every day. It happens every day. And I don't want to hear that it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It does. I'm not saying you're doing it if you're out there as a police officer, but your people around you are people that share your badge or whatever, your uniform. They they are. You should you Mm -hmm. should it it should be the mission of every good cop to put a stop to this. That Mm -hmm. should be your first thing you think about every morning you wake up. If you if you love your job and you honor your job, do you want to get rid of all this nonsense and you're going to do something about it, not just go, well, but a lot of us are good. That's not doing anything. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you want to buy some dildos? <laughs> I, I know. I was about to like, do we plug <laughs> some dildos at this point? Exactly. Free stuff is awesome, but free stuff to spice up your bedroom is even better. Select almost any one item for 50% off and then Adam and Eve loads on the free stuff. Enter offer code HORIO at checkout and get 10 tantalizing free gifts. A sexy item for him, a special gift for her, and a third item you'll both enjoy. And six free spicy movies. Ooh. Plus, free shipping. That's HORIO. W-H-O-R-E-O. HORIO at adamandeve.com. Everybody go take one action, right? At least one. Write, write an email. Make a phone call. Do one thing. Just Just do one thing today. After you listen to this, promise mm-hmm. us that I'm I'm taking your ener- energetic promise. I'm I'm holding you all accountable. Just do one thing. Just do one thing. Yeah. And it's not. Tweet. And it's not. That's the smallest I mean, I was gonna thing. Say, tweet, Just tweet at the people. Tweet, but like tweet at them, email them. But call honestly, them. do better than that. I, I don't. I think yeah. that tweeting it's not enough. You know, unless you never ever do it, and then it's like, well, if you never do it, then you don't have any followers. So what's the point well, of I, that? But like, right. you know, I don't know. Well, there was a congressman that just came out that said all this horrible stuff about killing people in the streets with guns and stuff and the only thing why i say tweet is that he's getting bombarded with fucking great. tweets so because great. he's not on instagram he's not on any other social like find where they have the most social media presence and go after them yeah that's all i can say yeah that, just uh, that fucking... yeah if there's like a plan then go with the plan you know show <sighs> up like do do whatever you got to do and we've said before it's there's lots of ways to do it so find your way that you mm-hmm. like to do and then do that mm-hmm. but do it today mm-hmm. today mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all so much for listening to Difficult Women. Send us an email. <laughs> yeah. Uh, order some dildos. <laughs> order some dildos and uh, and fight and help us fight. Come on, you know everybody. Yeah. Everybody wants it to be better. Let's get it better. Yeah. We're on. We're we are all on the same team. At the end of the day, that's the other thing mm-hmm. I want to say. Is we're all humans. We think that we're. We should we're, all be protecting each other, humans. Right. We think we want different things. We don't. We all want the same mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. We want to be safe. Mm-hmm. We want to feel protected. We want to take care of each other, and we want our communities to be safe. Mm-hmm. We all want that. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Vote. Love you. Bye.